Hi guys, I'm Jim from Sierra Vista, Arizona. Installing a hitch in your Toyota Sienna can take you to some really fun places like camping and bike riding. It can also tow a U-Haul trailer to just about anywhere in North America. Let's get to it. You'll need the tools seen here to complete this installation. Before we get started, let's go over a few key components of this hitch. This is your two inch locking receiver. This is your receiver housing that's gonna to attach to your cross tube. We're gonna take our receiver housing and attach it to our locking two inch receiver. So to separate the two, we're going to push down, rotate clockwise, and separate. First step, we're gonna install our receiver housing to the cross tube. Next, to install our included hardware, we're gonna take the hardened steel washer, put it on our bolt. Next, we're gonna install the bolt. Then we'll repeat on the second hole. Next, we will take our flange nut, screw it onto the bolt with the flat side facing the hitch. Now we'll repeat on the second bolt. Next, torque to manufacturer specifications. You can find those in the link below. Now with our receiver housing installed, we can move on to the next step. Next, we're gonna to have to remove the tail lights. In order to do that, we need to open the lift gate. Next, on the driver's side, we're gonna take out these two 10 millimeter bolts. Next, we're gonna remove the tail light by sliding it straight back. Let's just show you where the clips are behind here. You have one here and a body plug here. We have three wiring attachments, this one, here and here. This one, we do a quarter turn counterclockwise and pull out. Next, we're gonna push this tab and pull out. Next, we're gonna remove this one. It's just a cap. Be careful when opening this. We're gonna rotate this counterclockwise and then pull it out. There's a little tab on the top. We push that. Just push the tab down and pull the plug out. Now we're gonna repeat that process on the passenger side. Next, we're gonna remove these two bolts using a 10 millimeter socket. Next, we'll repeat that process on the passenger side. Next, we have to remove 12 push pins, two on the driver's side, eight across the back, and one in each wheel well. We have two 10 millimeter bolts, one on each side. We're gonna remove them using a 10 millimeter socket. As we were removing the fascia, we noticed there was one additional push pin in each wheel well. We're gonna continue by using a plastic trim removal tool and work our way around the bumper to the passenger side. Using a second set of hands, we're gonna unplug the parking assist harness. Now we're gonna set this aside. Next, we're gonna remove this panel on the driver's side. It has three bolts. We're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to remove them. Next, we're gonna remove the two rearmost plugs on each side using a flat blade screwdriver. Next, using a flathead screwdriver, we're gonna remove the tape from the bumper beam. Just peel it back so you can get to the nuts inside. Repeat the same process on the opposite side. Next, we're gonna remove the harness from the bumper beam. There's an attachment point on each side. Next, we're gonna remove three nuts on each side using a 14 millimeter socket. Be sure to set the nuts aside for later use. Now we're gonna repeat that on the passenger side. Next, pull out on the bumper beam. This will not be reinstalled. So after the bumper beam removal, we'll have to remove this attachment point for this harness using a pair of needle nose pliers, pinch it together, 
pull down. Now we need to cut this tab, leaving the weld nut in place with a pair of 10 snips. We'll cut straight back, right along this line. And next we'll use a pair of needle nose pliers and bend this tab until it breaks off. Our hitch came with these end brackets already installed. However, we tried to install it and the hitch will not fit on, the cross tube will not go onto the vehicle without these being removed. So now we're gonna to have to remove these. We're gonna remove both end brackets. I'll be using an 11 16 socket. Now I'm gonna bring my hitch into place. We're gonna be placing this where the existing bumper beam used to be. Be mindful that the carriage bolts are in place before you place the cross tube onto the vehicle. You'll notice that there won't be enough clearance if you try to put them in later. Next, we're gonna secure the hitch to the vehicle using the nuts that originally held the bumper beam on. And we're just gonna put those in hand tight. Next, we're gonna install our end brackets. First, we're gonna slide them over the carriage bolts. First, we place on our conical washer, being sure that the teeth are facing the hitch. And then we'll install our nut. Next, we'll install our second conical washer, again, being sure that the teeth are facing towards the hitch. And then we will place the nut on. Next, we're gonna take our included hardware. And we're gonna install them in these two holes. On each side of the vehicle, we have two different combinations. One is a bolt with a conical tooth washer. The other is a bolt with a locking washer and a flat washer. And the one with the locking washer and flat washer will be going in the front hole towards the front of the vehicle. And the next one with the conical tooth washer, this one will be installed towards the rear of the vehicle. Now we'll repeat that process on the other side of the vehicle. Now with all the hardware in place, we're going to tighten and torque everything down to manufacturer's specifications. You can find all of that information in the link below. We're gonna start with these three nuts using a 14 millimeter socket. Next, we'll tighten and torque the bolts going into the body using a three-quarter socket. Last, we'll tighten the carriage bolts using an 11 16 socket. Before we reinstall our fascia, some modifications will have to be made. We'll start by removing the kick sensor with this, these three screws, Phillips head. So I'm gonna briefly explain the modification that needs to be done to this kick sensor. And it needs to be done because this fascia will be trimmed out for the hitch clearance. So what we're going to do is we are going to remove these clips right here holding the green and yellow wires in place, leaving these two sets here on this side. Then we're gonna be trimming this off. These wires will come over to this side and now the kick sensor will only work on one side of the vehicle. So we're gonna start by removing these clips here by pushing in like that, as you see it just fell. And we're gonna continue doing this the rest of the way down Next, we're gonna remove these wires from these grooves by pushing in and setting them over to the side. Just like that. Okay, next, we are going to trim off this area using a pair of tin snips. I went ahead and taped these wires down, being sure that I kept the distance apart, the gaps apart, and we will reattach it 
and then we will tape these wires down the same distance apart here. Keep in mind to let the customer know that the kick sensor will only work on the right side of the vehicle. The last modification we'll be making is to the fascia. We'll be cutting it with an air saw. We went ahead and marked where we'll be cutting. If you want those dimensions, they'll be in the link below. Now we're going to go ahead and clean this up with a file. Now with our modifications done, we're going to reinstall the fascia. Make sure you reconnect any wiring that was disconnected. Now we're going to reinstall these 10 millimeter bolts. Repeat on the opposite side. As we're going to reinstall our underbody panel on the driver's side, we realized that we need to make a re relief cut right here to get by the side bracket of the hitch. After that cut, now we're ready to reinstall the panel. I'm adding this push pin in to help hold the panel in place so I can get the screw in above it. Now we're ready to reinstall all of our push pins. And lastly, we'll install this 10 millimeter on the driver's side. Now we're ready to reinstall our tail lights. Now that we have the vehicle on level ground, let's get a very important measurement. The receiver is a two inch receiver. End from the ground to the top of the receiver tube is 12 and 7 eighths. This will help you determine the length, rise and drop for your hitch accessories such as bike rack and cargo carrier. If you have any questions about the products seen in this video, or if you'd like to schedule an installation with a U-Haul hitch professional, visit us online today at uhaulhitches.com. hitchescom